Hello, and welcome to Songwriters Spotlight, the Western Mass Songwriters Collaborative Series. I'm Dr. Dan, your host of the show, where we feature Western Mass songwriters who perform their original songs and talk about the art of songwriting. Stay tuned to explore more about music and the tunesmithing that creates it. Our featured songwriter on this episode is Katie Clark, who has performed for years in concert and at festivals and recorded numerous CDs. She is joined by Larry LeBlanc, a terrific instrumentalist and harmonizer. Uh, well, this is a song that uh, Larry and I have been doing for a while, and uh, um, it's a song of mine, and then we added uh, um, a little Blackberry Blossom onto the front of it, so I will do this one for you. It's called Hard Rain. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> was written probably when I moved to Massachusetts uh, about 20 years ago and uh, this is a much more recent one let me get my cable uh, this is a much more recent one that uh, I wrote for my husband just a little love song so it's good to have little love songs and uh, this one is called September mm-hmm. 
two, three. Oh, the sweet golden days of September only last for a short fleeting time. And their passing calls me to remember how we loved them where I had a while. Oh, the winds, they will blow on our memories away. And the frost from the trees take their splendor. But today we lie fresh in the grass, sweetly dressed in the soft golden light of September. When I reach for your hand, I can sift through the sand to the time we were wild on the mountain Though the years have rolled by The same stars are in your eyes And our story's a tale worth recounting Summer birds leave the trees Autumn smoke in the breeze Pluck the last of the gay purple blasters Dearest love in your face I can still feel the grace of our first golden days in September. the last of the gay purple asters dearest love in your face i can still feel the grace of our first golden days in september dearest love in your face i can still feel the grace of our first golden days in september Good. Well, I'll do a little intro to this song. So, um, so this is a tune I wrote um, <clears throat> for my grandparents uh, who lived on Muddy Creek Road in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, so the title of this tune, of course, is Muddy Creek Road. <laughs> My grandpa's a railroad man Lives his life the best he can Takes me out to the big backyard We play catch yours throws too hard My grandma's a sight to see Cutting up chairs by the willow tree Homemade dress with a little white flowers How I'd love to spend those long hot hours It's nigh on summer and the crickets sing Count the fireflies from the old porch swing Learn about life from the stories they told Just wishing on the stars back at Muddy Creek Road well, we grew up fast and we moved far away We always come back for summer stay Think of those times when it seemed enough To have your family close and your kitchen full of love Summer and the cricket sing. Count the fire.
fireflies from the old porch swing. Learn about life from the stories they told. Just wishing in the stars back at Muddy Creek Road. Well, so um, this next song um, is a song that I wrote uh, some time ago, but it didn't really see the light of day until uh, um, I did a record a few years ago that was just finally out. And I um, liked it so much the way it came out that we put it on first. And uh, this is called Slender's Thread. As Larry likes to say, it's the closest thing we do to rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Sometimes we hang on by the slender's thread. I stay up on that and in the morning lay in bed. Do what you want, but you can't change blue. Sometimes we hang on by the slanderous thread The kitchen's on fire, but the rent is paid ahead I tell you one more time, but you won't believe a word I said I'd rather take a fast car, baby, but I'll ride this mule instead Sometimes we hang on by the slanderous thread. Early in the morning, rising with the sun, I break the world wide open with the work I have done. Barely hanging on, but I know I'm not dead. Sometimes we hang on by the slanderous thread.
Picking up the spit and shine to try to stay ahead Feel the weight of this cold world in every step I tread Joy will come on back in a wrong good time it said Sometimes we hang on by the slenderest thread So this is a song. Uh, it's one of my older songs, but one of one of my favorites, actually. Um, and uh, I wrote it for Johnny Cash and June Carter Cash uh, right after Johnny died. Um, Johnny died about a year, year and a half after June died, and uh, I just. I love their love story, and um, so wrote this song called June.
ring of fire. Um. So this is um this is a tune that I wrote that is very place specific in. I was driving home one beautiful summer's evening after playing at the Green River Festival, uh, which is a lovely festival that we have around here. And um, I was on Zero Fisk Road, which is, I like to call that area the West County Line. Uh, for some reason, it seems like it's the, the line that divides um, Franklin County and the sort of western part of it from there on. And there's just a beautiful view that I love there. And uh, so came home and, and wrote this song called The West County Line. Such a sight of my life is the blue on the hills on a warm country night. You might be as dark as a glass of red wine, but your soul will get right out on the West County line. There are some things a woman can see and Some things I know that you see in me Now it's time for this living So small to take a bow Cause this road's headed straight into the sun West County line looks so lovely and right She's a deep shade of blue in the shadows tonight Might go drink whiskey, call up a song might do some right and I might do some wrong When I'm gone, my freed soul will still be In the West County wind and the West County tree
Well, Katie, that was a great set. I really enjoyed the music. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, and thanks to Larry. It was a terrific uh, instrument and, and harmonies as well. Yeah, very yeah. Enjoyable. Very, very lucky to play with Larry. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing like it. Have yeah. good backup. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, um, so these were wonderful songs. When did you start writing songs? Well, it, you know, I was thinking about this, and I guess I started, I started writing songs, although they, they weren't really songs, they were more like poems, but they, there was music involved in my head, probably in late high school or college, but they, I, I wasn't really playing an instrument, um, so I didn't, you didn't really have any, any, anywhere to go with them, and then I started playing guitar, and by my, around 30, um, I would say, I um, started writing songs and um you know most of them weren't really any good <laughs> but um they got better and um, i really just enjoyed the process and then uh, i moved from california to massachusetts and i just had this big songwriting spurt um, where a lot of songs came and a bunch of them i really liked and kept and um, started playing with other folks um, and performing and so that's kind of, it just happened organically, I guess. So like it's in the air, huh? <laughs> Sometimes well, it feels that way. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I know that there's a lot of amazing songwriters who have a lot of protocols and a lot of that. I'm just not one of those people. Um, it, it, it seems like it's something that has a more organic process for me that, that uh, you know, um, that does feel a little bit like the old Whitman thing about dictation, you know, <laughs> as a, I'm taking dictation as opposed to I'm really involved and I'm setting out to write a song and this is the topic and I, I, that's just not my, I, I don't think I have the patience for that, honestly, <laughs> the way some people do. Some people really make it a craft. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but it, it sound, your songs sound well edited. I mean, they they, are, they don't sound totally spontaneous. It sounds like you you work them over. There, there's you, a there's yeah. a process for sure. There's mm -hmm. a process for sure. And and I've gotten some good help from um, other songwriters and and folks um, a, a bit as well too. But for the most part, they do tend to come fairly well fleshed out. There might be a little something missing or some phrases to add or change, um, but. Yeah, for the most part, it seems, especially the, the good ones, they tend to come um, and, and I'll get done with them and sometimes a day or two and sometimes maybe a week or two, but I, I, don't, I don't labor over songs, I guess, hmm. I would say. Interesting. Well, uh, what songwriters have inspired you to, uh, mm -hmm. to help you to get a, get a hold of this muse that you're reaching out for? Yeah, well, um, oh gosh, there could be a really long list here, but I would say the people I, um, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, you know, some of the songwriters whose work I admire the most are when I was really learning to sing and learning to write songs and to perform and all of that, that was, was really, um, mostly in the 90s and that was a time when a lot of who I was listening to so it was like Towns Van Zandt, uh, Nancy Griffith, um, Gillian Welch, Kate Wolf um, and you know there's people like Steve Earle it's all like a, a sort of Americana and and folk people who you know I look back on that and it's like boy learning those people's songs so I could sing them um, at, you know at parties or just sing them with other people I had a wonderful um, singing partner where we we did some performing but we just did a lot of working up material and also the indigo girls um, I had another friend who we just we just love to play indigo girls songs and so we worked up all these parts and you know we learned the songs and I think that osmosis kind of happens when you really kind of um, are deep into good songwriting you know some you learn some things without thinking too much about it hopefully mm -hmm. I, at least I, I feel like that's what happened for me um, and then I think about it, some of the tunes that I've written are, 
uh, uh, more obviously influenced by this artist or that artist, or mm -hmm. it's something I think they would have liked, or you know, it's, it's sort of in that neighborhood kind of, I would say. Um, so I, I think those are those are some of the people whose whose work, and, and then there's also you know amazing women country singers like. Um, and songwriters like Dolly Parton and Loretta Lynn, and um, I, I just love that old old country music. And uh, um, so some of that has been influential, I think, too. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a lot of roots in your music uh, that, that really comes through. So I can I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, are there some topics that you write about that? Uh, that inspire you more than others, or are there some topics you like to go back to? Well, it appears that a great deal of my songs somehow get tied into uh, the seasons and the passing of time and sort of those those kinds of themes. There's a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, the CD that I just put out is called Season of My Time, which is the title of a song that actually didn't make it on that record, but I love that song and I love that, uh, I, I love that, just that name seemed right for the vibe of the CD. And, and a lot of the songs I do have themes that have to do with seasons. Uh, Larry was just kind of joking a little while ago and saying, <laughs> we've got a song called September, a song called June, you know, I should mm -hmm. write a song for all the other months. But, um, all joking aside, I, I think there is something to, for me, um, a lot of my songs have been written outdoors, um, in my head while walking or hiking, or just sometimes out um, on my, in my screen house, um, in the yard, uh, sometimes driving. Um, but I think there's something about being uh, out of doors or in the open that that allows me to write and then so often those kinds of themes there's a lot about being healed by nature um, that that seems to come out in 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 my songs also um, yeah so so I'd say there's there's that and and uh, you know the good old themes of love and loss I'm, I have a lot of Irish in me, and so you know, love and loss. You can't, <laughs> you can't get too far from those things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're ready made. So you mm. take a walk, you write a song, you write, get home, pick up your guitar, and write it all down. Uh, sometimes it's more like um, I run to the car. <laughs> And I write on the back of a map or anything else that I have wow. napkin or anything. And I hope to God that there's a pen somewhere. I, I got to the point where I always made sure that I kept pen in the car because uh, things go so fast if you don't get them, at least for me. And I, I, you know, this was like the days before I always had a cell phone in my pocket. And nowadays I, you know, when I'm out in the woods, um, I might not always have a cell phone with me. And so, um, you know, for me, it's it's having um, having those things come and hearing the music at the same time, and then just <laughs> sometimes you gotta just run like heck to wherever you can write it down. I've had it happen also where something came up when I was driving, and I just pulled over and wrote the oh. most of the song, if not the whole thing, came at that point too. So, yeah. That's a very interesting process. Um, would it be fair to say that you write songs because they come to you and you, you feel you have to capture them? Is that? Um, that's a that's an interesting way of putting it. And I would say that feels true. Mm -hmm. I would say that feels true because again, I'm not like a pursuer of songs and maybe I should be. If this were how I made my money in my career, I probably would darn well have to be. And so I can afford to be kind of a lazy songwriter because it's not how I make a living. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, if I really, um, you know, with somebody who uh, was in that realm of where I had to make my living by my art, I'm sure it'd be a whole nother story, you mm. know. Um, but the way it goes for me is more about that sort of feeling of taking dictation of whatever's coming through. Um, yeah.
And so it's out there. You got to capture it and yeah, put it down. Yeah, on paper and yeah, in, in the airwaves. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. When you think about other songwriters, particularly your songwriters starting out, uh, yeah. what suggestions or advice do you have for them? Oh gosh. Um, well. Um, I would say particularly if if you're a female, um, write and keep writing and don't give up. And um, it, being a female songwriter, even though you know there's a lot more spotlight on female songwriters, um, and in the folk world there's more of that. Um, I think it's still a, a harder thing. I think um, nobody ever told me, "Hey, you could be a songwriter." And nobody ever really told me, hey, you know, you could front a band. I figured those things out myself and I did that. So I would say, especially, you know, to young women, just do it. You can do it. And um, there's no reason why you can't. And um, if it's something that you feel and you love, um, make it happen and make the time and um, learn whatever instrument is going to help you write. And um uh, surround yourself with people who believe in you and are going to be really good mentors to you. I had some really wonderful, um, I, I was on a group for six or seven years with two other women who are dear friends and we had a wonderful, wonderful time. They're still playing together as the Bucks Car Lilies and I was part of that trio. And um, they, you know, I, I think in a lot of different ways, I learned a lot from them. So surround yourself with other people who are writers, who play instruments, and who do this seriously. That would be my advice to anybody, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever been a member of a songwriting group or? Yeah, yeah well, I, I'm in this, this little songwriting salon that continues to this day with those two folks and the a um, couple of other wonderful, wonderful songwriters that we know and we meet once a month. People bring material. You don't always have to have material, but uh, I also hosted a songwriters sort of salon uh, at my house for some years as well. So I figured it was easier if people were coming to me <laughs> and invited other songwriters whose work I really liked. And it's, it's wonderful to do that. It's wonderful to do that. Have you collaborated with, with other songwriters to Put together a song uh yes and not as much as i would like to I, I, that's still something i would love to do but um when uh, i was in the boxcar lilies we did some of that uh most notably one song that <laughs> we were going to record and we went into the recording studio and we're literally at the last minute changing lines and working on things together and it was it was really cool because it was actually jenny's um jenny goodspeed's brother who wrote this beautiful song that we decided to do and um we just felt like it needed some tweaks and, and some different things. So Jenny and I were working on it kind of right up to before recording it. Um, so that was that was really fun. But we, we did a lot of, um, uh, we did some really enjoyable uh, work together in, in that way. And that's something I would love to do more of. That sounds exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Anything else you want to share with the, the audience uh, about songwriting or your mm. music? Gosh, um, well, uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, one one hope that I would have about, um, you know, people sometimes say, well, you know, what do you hope to accomplish? And like, I love making CDs. I really enjoy the recording process. I made two CDs with a, a trio and then a group that I fronted, um, and then three with the Boxcar Lilies and the one recently of my own solo CD with a bunch of other musicians on, including Larry. Um, but, uh, you know, like to me, just the, the process of going through recording is so creative and fun. And that's something that I hope anybody who has some time, resources, tools, wants to learn about and do should do because it's just, it's an extraordinary fun creative process. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a wonderful journey to do recording. So that's something I would say I've been incredibly fortunate to do. I've worked with a couple of just wonderful 
wonderful engineers and producers um, through the process. And um, it's just, you know, one of the most fun things in the world. And a lot of work. Yes, yes. it is work. But it, to me, that's fun work, uh -huh. you know. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Katie, thank you so much for sharing your music and your, and your thoughts, uh, some really interesting insights and perspectives that you provided to us. And um, one of, I know our listeners are going to enjoy it very much. So. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, thank you. All right. Thanks for watching our show. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Western Mass Songwriters Collaborative, promoting the original music scene in Western Massachusetts. If you want to learn more about the WMSC, go to their Facebook page. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Dan. I hope you'll tune in again for the show that puts a spotlight on songwriters. <laughs>